Hello everybody and welcome back to Throttle Grotto. This week it is time to get this hydraulic clutch situation figured out. So let's get to it. Alright, so if you remember last week, we were working on this hydraulic clutch assembly, uh, or hydraulic clutch master, and uh, I ran into some issues with the clevis. Now, for those of you that watched and remember last week, you'll, you'll recognize that this is a completely different clevis and it's actually threaded all the way down onto the rod. Um, and I've actually had this in the car, mounted to the clutch pedal, but uh, it, it's tensioned, it's pre-tensioned a little bit, about, about a half inch or so. Um, which I have some concerns about because I have some concerns about the throw of the uh, rod in the clevis uh, and bottoming out, not giving me enough travel to release the clutch. And so, one of the things that I've came up with, well, let me back up. One of the suggestions that was made, and I actually did consider doing it, was threading the rod further so the clevis threads on further. Um, the issue that I thought about with that was, I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but I made a little mark on there. Get out of the way so the camera will focus on that. There we go. So I made a little mark on there, and that's how much further that this whole assembly needs to go in in order to work. Um, or more importantly, the uh, connection for the pedal needs to go in for this to work. Um, so I think if I threaded the rod that far down, I might end run into issues where that might even go into the seal. Or I don't want to risk it. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this nice brand new clevis off of here. And since I have a lot of meat on this end to play with, I think I'm going to grind off this end of the clevis and uh, or more actually more quickly just cut it off because it's it's threaded all the way through so worst case scenario I have an extra 5 16 by 24 nut I could grind this nut down and fit it in between there um, to like use as a lock lock nut um, so I need about 13 millimeters of room and if I measure this piece here I've got on here I've got about 16 16 and a half mil if I really 17 let's say 17 so I got 17 mil if I need 13 I could grind this all the way down put this nut on here and that would give me a total uh, let's see here if I take off there, add, it should give me about 12. Um, so it'll get me really close. So the, the absolute worst case scenario is that I have to shim the master uh, bet between the master and the bracket, which I'm completely fine with shimming this out a little bit. I've got all kinds of metal around here. I can cut a little, um, cut a little piece to space this uh, clutch master out, and uh, then we'll be good. So. That's, let's get this let's get this on there and see I'll try mounting it in the car and uh, see how close we are all right so now we have this uh, this clevis threaded all the way on and uh, looks like it's this could do the trick. Um, I will most likely have to trim out the or trim the threads down. But that's okay. Um, so I'm gonna go mount this in the car and uh, see uh, see how close we are. Um, if we're gonna be um, as far as the distance from here to the pedal is gonna be um, okay. I probably could just go do it with a tape measure, but it's kind of more fun just to try putting it in the car and seeing if it fits. Good news is uh, shortening that clevis actually worked really well. Um, I have it in the car, and uh, one thing I forgot to do while I had everything out of the way was to cut off the bracket that holds the clutch cable in position inside the car. So I'm gonna try to get in there with my, I have a little body saw that I'm gonna try to get in there with, 
and see if I can just trim the uh, the two pieces that hold that uh, holds that bracket onto the uh, whole pedal assembly. So um, once I have that, I can actually show you guys uh, how everything went. So you guys can watch me hopefully struggle with trying to get this uh, body saw in there and uh, see if I can make this cut. So the body saw actually worked really well. There was only like one angle I could get to that bracket at and it was actually a good angle because I could cut it um, the way that gave me the most clearance for the hose to pass through. Um, and so the inside of the car is actually done. Well, <laughs> the inside of the car mounting the uh, clutch master is done. This inside of this car is far from done. So let me show you how it looks with everything installed. Um, so you can see kind of what it looks like without a dash in. Um, and then uh, I'll set the dashboard in place and you can see what it looks like with a dashboard in and what kind of access you have with the dashboard actually in the car. Um, and then I'll give you a breakdown of the things that I needed to do to make this kit work in an early car. And then we'll jump out to the engine compartment and uh, we'll install the, uh, actually install the clutch uh, slave into the transmission and then this part of it will be done. So the little clip of me putting the dashboard in uh, failed miserably. <laughs> the tripod decided that it wanted to play games. So, you know, one of these days I'm going to learn that sometimes it's easier just to pick stuff up than it is to try to work around it. But that's not today. So I put a couple screws in the dash just to hold it in place. Um, I know we talked about some things that you should keep in mind when uh, in the last episode about uh, taking the dash out. A few things to keep in mind when you're putting it back in. Um, one is there's a little clip on the steering column that uh, the dash engages with. Let's see if I can show it to you here. It is right here. It's right here. Here. I can't really get any. There we go. Well, I just wash it out. So there's a little little metal clip right there that the dash kind of sandwiches in, and then up underneath here, I think we talked about the little tab that the glove box slides on, to, or the glove box slides onto, um, and then over on the sides. Let's see if I can get some light over there. There's your bracket that the you just put the bolts in from underneath and that holds the holds the dashboard in place. So it's like with the dash in place. Sorry about the bad lighting. It's just all I have in here is my uh, my work right now. But there you can see it right inside the the U-shaped bracket there. And uh, the hose kind of does a, a little bendy th bendy thing there and then down between the pedal cluster and out the hole uh, that the clutch cable originally went out of so why did i run it that way instead of so the acute visually acute of you might under know that there's a notch right here and that's where that cable should pass through well, on this car, we don't have clearance right here to run that cable, so I decided to run it around and out between the brake pedal and 
Um, so what I'll have to do is I'll have to attach this cable to this bracket here so that it doesn't rub. So just another little weird difference between these cars and how I kind of had to adapt this kit to work on the early car. So a couple things I had to change. One was that clevis. Uh, I had to get a 5 16 by 24 uh, clevis and I was able to get that uh, from a place like a place that sells uh, like hardware uh, like Granger. Um, there's a place called Tacoma Screw that I drive by for work. Um, and I actually just went to C Tacoma Screw and bought one over the counter. It was like 10 bucks. Um, I had to get a tap uh, from the hardware store, a 5 16 by 24 tap, so that I could thread out or chase the threads on those holes uh, when I cut the back of that clevis off. So that was about, uh, I think it was like 7 bucks for the tap. Um, I had to buy another 5 16 by uh, 24 nut uh, that I ground down and put on the inside of the clevis. That was like 35 cents at the hardware store. Uh, let's see here, what else did I have to buy? Uh, the metal that I extended that bracket with, I got from a place called Metal Supermarket, uh, and it was basically a remnant, and I think it was like a buck and a half for the piece of metal. Uh, so um, it didn't cost me very much to make the kit work. Um, I just had to overcome a few difficulties. So hopefully, if you got an early car and you want to do this clutch, this uh, hydraulic clutch conversion, pick up the Fast Bunny kit. It's well made. Now you know how it goes in. Uh, so right now there's only one last thing that I see in this car that might cause a problem, and that is the speedometer cable. <laughs> so this bracket, the way that uh, the way that it's designed. Um, again, it's designed for a late car, not an early car. And where the uh, there's two holes in the in the rain tray that the speedometer cable could pass through. Um, so if you use the left hole, uh, depending on what cluster you have, uh, you may have to drill another hole in that bracket. Uh, and you'll see it once it's in the car exactly where it lines up. In fact, I'll show you. Maybe you even saw it in one of the other pictures. You can see where the speedometer cable comes through the firewall on the right there next to the bracket and then just behind there. See if I can balance everything. Nope, I can't. It's because I got too much junk in here. So right there is the other grommet right behind there. You can see my finger now. Um, and so if you're using that location, you may have to reroute your speedometer cable to the right hand hole or uh, you could use a hole saw and just drill a hole you know, make one of these holes larger uh, so that your speedometer cable will actually pass straight through. So that's it for inside the car. Let's go to the engine compartment and uh, get that clutch slave installed and then we can put some fluid in here and see how it works. All right, it is December. I am outside, it is cold. And I'm gonna get this installed so that I can go back inside where it's warm. <laughs> I needed to open the door so that I could get to the front of the car. And that's pretty much all there is to it. The kit is installed now. Uh, literally once you have the clutch slave in place, the hose has the proper end on it so it just snaps in and that's it. All I gotta do now is uh, fill it up and, uh, and bleed the system and then we'll have a fully operating clutch pedal. <laughs> so that's really all there is to installing one of these. Um, sorry I had to break it up over two episodes, but um, normally it would be a pretty straightforward install if you have a later model car. If you have an earlier model car, hopefully this helps you guys uh, understand what's involved in setting it up for a, uh, a hydraulic clutch setup. Um, that's all the time I have for today. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and throw some fluid in this, probably at a later time, um, just because it's cold and I'm cold and I've been outside all day and working on some other stuff, working on the Nissan, and I'm kind of ready to go inside and warm up. <laughs> but thank you guys for watching. Thanks to Fast Bunny Metalworks for helping me work, on, work out the kinks on this kit. Um, I'll put the link to their website down below if you want to go order or check out some of the other stuff they have for Mark 1 chassis. And that's it. So until next week, 
get out there and work on something.